My name is Nathan Bauer. I'm a senior product manager at, uh, focusing on performance at Zillow Group. And um, I'm, I'm going to share with you some insights with how we've been able to think about a new measuring, or a different, I should say, a different measuring strategy where we can incorporate real business metrics with empathy for the user and bring more transparency and priority to performance. So business metrics are great. They're never going to go away. We love looking at metrics all the time. We make decisions, critical decisions for the business. We look at A-B tests and we evaluate a control versus a treatment. And we need to think about how we can leverage some of these or enact some different perspective of user experience so we can feel some empathy or understand how those experiences are happening. <clears throat> As developers, we think about operational metrics. We have signals from services, we look at uh, access logs, we look at JavaScript errors, but this doesn't really resonate with the user. It's a perspective solely of is, is the service working or is the site up? We should think about this a little bit differently. Shift to are my users happy? Isn't this a better perspective on achieving our goal? <clears throat> So the great Warren Buffett, one of the best and most successful investors, says don't just satisfy your customers, delight them. Now that's a really interesting concept. We should be thinking about this more often. Why aren't we? We have all these metrics in front of us, but they don't really tell us are our users delighted with our product? How can we go about quantifying this? <clears throat> This is a picture from our local Amazon store in Seattle. Um, I walked by, I've used this a couple times. You might have seen these elsewhere, these happy or not consoles. Sometimes they appear in the airport, and I know there's other occasions where you might uh, interface with something similar to this. When you use uh, a Stripe reader, you buy lunch somewhere, and you get an email later that has a smiley, frowny face in it. Well, that's interesting. It's just some additional data point that we can get a perspective on the user experience, right? It doesn't necessarily integrate directly with all of our business metrics, but it's another reference with how our users perceived and interacted with our product. So how can we take this concept and apply it a little bit more broadly? Well, the data from Jacob Nielsen's research uh, was really inspiring here for me. He talks about limits of human perceptual abilities and he defines them very specifically that 100 milliseconds feels instantaneous for us as, as humans. As a behavior, we feel 100 milliseconds is instantaneous. One second is sort of the limit to the flow of thought. And beyond that, our attention starts to dwindle. So. We have the ability after one second where we're context switching. We might think about something else. Our flow of thought is broken and we're potentially maybe going to a different website, maybe even thinking about going to our competitors. But the limit to our attention span is, is 10 seconds. So I've put some application to try and classify this a little bit differently with some meaningful words. So consider delight within the first second. After that, satisfied, and then beyond angry. So this is a new way that we, as developers, can feel with these words some potential empathy for how our users are engaging in our products. But uh, one other thing I want to think about here is from, from the web perspective, we expect things to happen as, as quick as possible. And if we apply this here, we would think that anything upstream from the, from the data request from the browser has an expectation of one second. So any of the upstream services and dependencies, we have to work backwards and understand that there is some expectation there. Those services have to complete within some amount of time. So how do we apply this to the metrics that we have? This is Giltine. He has a, an amazing talk on how not to measure latency. And I encourage all of you to go and watch this when you have time. In his talk, 
he recalls the scene from The Matrix where Morpheus is describing to Neo, this is it, this is your last chance. After this, there's no turning back. So you might think about that today. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up tomorrow, believe everything as it was before. You take the red, the red pill, and we stay in Wonderland and see how far this rabbit hole goes. So thinking about that, percentiles, he talks about percentiles and he considers them percent lies because this isn't really our actual user experience. This is the median, but we know that there's many users that experience this differently. And just from this, this specific metric, this is a, a REM metric from Zillow over a 24 hour period and we can see there's some high variability here. It's not stable, it's not consistent. If we were to build an alarm against this and identify if something happened when we deployed, we're going to end up with a noisy alarm or a threshold that's really far away from something that we care about. So if we look at the 95th and the 99th percentiles, we can see that 50th percentile as now a flat line. There's, and the 99th percentile is over, over uh, 10x different. So that's pretty significant. But it gets worse. This is the max. I don't know if that's real. I don't know if I want to trust that in some ways. But there's a high degree of standard deviation here. This is significant. This is huge. And <clears throat> these metrics are multimodal. So different times during the day, they fluctuate. So if we were to build that monitor on them, we're going to end up with a monitor that has too high of a threshold to tell us at a reasonable, reasonable point in time when we've introduced regression. So we really need to think about looking at the latencies that we do have, the metrics that we do have, a little bit differently. So how can we do that? <clears throat> Rick described histograms earlier today, and I advocate this strategy as well. Let's look at request density over response time. And let's carve it a little bit differently. Maybe we'll say, uh, we'll draw a vertical line and say one second and two seconds. Well, now we've distributed and bucketed the entire user experience for a duration of time. Say maybe this is one minute of time. It could be an hour of time, however much you choose. But now we have something to put those, those words against. Delighted, satisfied, and angry. And if we're to build a measure against this, we can plot the area under the curve, and we understand how many of those experiences were delighted how many were satisfied, and then how many were angry. And we understand the whole picture in entirety, right? Some responses like we saw in the max are out there in that tail. But do we need to really care how many are out there and, and understand how, how variable that is? They're all captured in that last area of the graph. So remember, uh, this is an opportunity to look at these in continuum. So as time goes on, this is going to shape shift. Maybe you introduce some change, you uh, release a new build, and you end up with different area under the curve. <clears throat> so uh, where else have we seen some simplification like this? It's nice to look at our metrics in a very specific and easily digestible way. Uh, this is a great experience, a great example. Um, the, the Chrome user experience report simplifies this in a way for us that we can think about how many requests were fast, average, or slow. But for me, that doesn't connect as a developer with the specific code path or the specific feature that I might want to instrument. <clears throat> and then uh, let me uh, tell you if you would believe that there's more to this picture. There's more to the histogram than just understanding the measurements that we do capture. There are a lot of omissions. Guillotine talks about omissions in the data, and the measurements that we have are only the measurements that we're able to collect. So let me take you down the rabbit hole a little bit deeper. And the rabbit hole in this case is the New York subway system. So this is an awesome radial diagram of route times across the entire New York subway system. 
There's hundreds of stations and millions of people that use the New York subway system on a daily basis. They go from station to station and they have expected commute times between each location. If we're to look at the diagram on the very out, outer radial of this is 90 minutes and the very center is Manhattan. So it's about 90 minutes to traverse from the outer edge of the system to the center. Each of the dots is color coded for the train speed. The controllers of the system have an expected route time and an expected train travel speed between each of the locations. So they have a set amount of expectation. And as a user, if we're going to travel the subway, we're, by example, if we got in the very top, if we went in the station in Poughkeepsie and we're going to travel to Manhattan, there's 26 stations in that line. That's 26 different dependencies to get to our goal, to where we want to go. Oh. So in our application, we have a website that serves our users, and there's many dependencies upstream that have to work effectively to achieve our goal and deliver that great, delighted experience for the user. So I want to parallel the opportunity here to think about each of these dependencies and actually measure with expectation each of those routes and each of those components. But now let's go on a journey. Let's get on the subway and we're going to go through a turnstile. And as a developer, I'm going to tick a counter. I'm going to say, I'm going into the subway. And then I get to Manhattan and we come out of another turnstile. So now we have a one-to-one -one ratio of the traveled, that traveled code path. But look here, this little guy is sneaking under the turnstile. Does this happen to us? Do we miss metrics? Do we miss latencies? Yes, we do. We have errors from, from any web application. We have 500s and other responses that don't give us the signal that we want from a user perspective. We have unhandled exceptions. Maybe we have handled exceptions. But don't, those don't often give us the latencies and project in the whole of the picture. In the front end, we have JavaScript errors, and sometimes the responses are too slow that our run metrics might not even collect the measures that we care about. So we don't understand the whole picture all the time. <clears throat> so we have this way to compute success rate now. And how does this success rate help us? Well, the strategy that I just described to you, I call the tiered turnstile. And basically what we're doing is we're quantifying each experience based on did the experience happen successfully and how long did it take. So if it was a failed response, we can compute that success rate and bucket them as failures under angry. We have an expectation of delight that is fast, satisfied as fast enough, and we can set bounds for any of those expected code paths. So if I traveled from Poughkeepsie to uh, Manhattan and it took 90 minutes, which is what the radial diagram said, I would probably bucket that as satisfied. If it was faster than that, maybe we would count it as delighted. So uh, oh, just a quick example of how uh, one might do this in, from a services perspective um, and think about instrumenting Java services, Python, or Node. Um, basically, you declare a turnstile, you set delighted and satisfied uh, expectations for how many you want to delight and satisfy. You set latency thresholds for how fast you expect those to be. And then relative to the thing you want to instrument, you simply register a timer, uh, register your turnstile, and increment in. Then you do your piece of code that you care about, uh, compute the time, and increment out, and then register the time. So now you have, did it, did it happen, and how long did it take? And I also note here, we don't want to do this in the finally block because we'll always have a 100% ratio. From the client perspective, there's opportunity there to instrument as well. We can, we can measure a turnstile in based on as a JavaScript uh, declaration 
for, a new, for an image early in the head. We'll just collect uh, the page that we want to measure and the time. And then your regular uh, run library can collect the same existing timings that you care about. So if you write to any, uh, any custom events to user timing or you collect other navigation time or resource timing, those can all come back just as they normally do. But then in the server, we parse those counts and we declare the things that we specifically care about, our thresholds for the events that we want to measure specifically for KPIs, by example, specific pages that we care about or specific pa uh, events on page that we care about. <clears throat> and we end up with data that looks like this. So this is a component that's in the client, in the browser, and we're collecting ins and outs. And immediately in the chart on the right, you can see that they're not one to one. There's a gap. So we don't have, in this case, this object wasn't loading for all of our users. So it raises questions as to what's happening. This might be concerning depending on what the object is on the page. And in the left we can see we computed the success rate. There's a 15% margin of error here. We're not delivering that thing 15% of the time. So depending on what this is, this could be really concerning. This could be revenue impacting even. And we see a spike here which was specific to an availability issue. I know in this case, we moved some services around and the new service location wasn't available to the user. So we were able to catch this really effectively, really quickly. The operational signal from the new service location was that it was up and it was healthy. We're ready to go. But these metrics showed us differently. They told us that the user wasn't experiencing what we wanted them to. If we look at latency during the same time, at 11.30, there isn't actually a spike here because this was an availability issue. <clears throat> There's actually a drop here. So what's this look like? Simplified, that simple, easy view, it looks like this. And now I have an effective chart, simple, effective chart that I can have a discussion about with the team and we can talk about over time and we can look at to make sure we're making progress on what matters most. If I'm willing to look at a larger view of this, <clears throat> I can query possibly multiple events, the desktop response or the mobile response, and I can investigate all of these together and understand if it's a latency issue or if it's an availability issue. So connecting back to real business metrics, this is what you might end up with. This is gonna motivate your conversation about delivering what you, what you expect to your users and from a developer perspective, now you have more empathy that you're delivering what you want as you expect to. Uh, in this case, we're showing delighted, satisfied, and angry. Delighted within three and a half seconds. On the top is the mobile, mobile specific view where there's 51% of responses that were delighted. Angry views in this case were 19% and month over month they increased by 2%. So that's concerning. When we look at it and we talk about it that way, we can understand during product planning meetings or sprint planning meetings and have a discussion about, hey, this is getting worse. Our latest release pushed us in the wrong direction. What are we gonna do about that? And when we feel that this many users are angry, we have more, more of a priority to do something differently about it. Uh, in the chart, you can see a few occasional spikes, and those are other incidents that happened relative to time. And we can go and investigate those and have conversations about them as well. But this is what I wanted to share with you today. It's a different way to simplify measuring with real business metrics Understanding, sorry, I forgot to mention, there are, the bottom row here talks about page views. So this is a real page, by example, uh, in the real world collecting metrics that we can look at and care about and prioritize. So this is a, an opportunity to think about how in your workplace you can connect real business metrics with empathy for the user, 
to increase transparency and drive priority for performance. Thank you.